coming into the preseason, Garrett Green was picked dead last. That's right, dead last among all Power 5 quarterbacks, according to Clint Brewster from 24-7 Sports. Well, I went straight to the source to find out why did you have Garrett Green ranked dead last, and where would you rank Garrett Green today? And I'm going to ask those questions to Clint Brewster himself right after this word from my sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode is brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive, where friends and family pricing means you get the best deal right up front on any new or pre-loved vehicle in stock every time. With brands like Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GMC, Buick, and Subaru, the Dutch Miller Automotive family is always growing and ready to put you in the car or truck you've been searching for. Check out our inventory across West Virginia at DutchMillerAuto.com or come in today to the home of friends and family pricing only at a Dutch Miller Automotive store near you. What is up, college sports fans, Big 12 fans, fellow members of Mountaineer Nation? Welcome into another edition of Kuz's Corner. Belly yourself up to the bar. Let me pour you out a shot of top shelf college football content. On tap in today's episode, we are talking Garrett Green and his performance so far as the quarterback for the West Virginia Mountaineers this 2023 season. And I'm proud to bring on the show the gentleman who I took ex- whose list I took exception to earlier in the season. That's Mr. Clint Brewster over at 24-7 Sports. So sit back and enjoy this interview and this Q&A with Mr. Clint Brewster. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined here today by Mr. Clint Brewster, who's an analyst and prospect evaluator for 24-7 Sports. Clint, how are you doing today? Me, but um, you know, a, a, a nice warm welcome from you. Yeah, man, uh, it won't be none of that stuff. Trust me. Uh, I, I did, I did take exception to your list. I won't lie, but uh, <laughs> but uh, it's all it's all opinions at the end of the day, right? Absolutely, man. I've I've been hearing it quite a bit from the the, the West Virginia fans, and and uh, that's good. I mean, I. I I don't think if you you make a you know a quarterback list of the top power five um, quarterbacks across the country, if, if nobody's upset with you, then you're probably not doing something right. Right. Great point, man. Great point. Uh, real quick before we dive into the questions and answers and and uh, the conversation, man, just let everybody know where they can find your work and uh, the easiest way to interact with you. Yeah, I'm I'm on Twitter at uh, Clint Brew two four seven. And, um, you know, I, I'd say that that's the easiest way you can find me at 247sports.com. We do a, um, a lot of quarterback evaluation and analyst and, and uh, transfer portal work. So uh, 24-7 sports, yeah. Awesome. Now, just to give us some background, Clint, you played uh, – you were a former college quarterback yourself. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, in the class of 2007, I went to University of Minnesota, and then I transferred to Tennessee Tech. And um, yeah, I played under some, some really good um, coaches. You know, my dad was a, a college football coach and NFL coach growing up. Awesome. And, and um, so, been around the game quite a bit, and I've been lucky to be around some great coaches. Now, uh, who's your dad? Uh, Tim Brewster. Tim, uh, yeah. Okay. At, at Colorado. Right. Okay. I thought that might be the case, but I wanted to clarify that without for the yeah. audience. Yeah. He's, he's been around quite a bit, but um, but yeah, they're they're having an interesting season there at Colorado for sure. They are for sure, absolutely. Um, well, yeah. What the reason I brought you on today, Clint? Uh, obviously, you, you're the one who put together the top top power five quarterbacks list in the preseason, and you had Garrett Green from West Virginia listed at number sixty nine which was dead last uh, among Power 5 quarterbacks. Can you first go through your reasoning as to why you had him listed at that spot? Yeah, so just uh, the list. Obviously, somebody had to be at the at the end, but, um, you know, we go through every single, you know, uh, uh, an- analytical approach to it. We do a subjective uh, film review. We um, – you know, get intel from, from coaches. We, you know, we study every single angle that we can 
of it and um just heading into the the season um just the body of work that he put together you know we thought was was towards the end um uh, of the power five and uh you know things weren't looking very good with at, at west virginia they were they were um picked last to in the uh in the conference but um you know they've they've played a, a, a lot better than um uh than their preseason ranking you know garrett green has obviously played a lot better than his preseason uh, uh grade from me um you know i would probably put him more towards the i don't know uh late 40s now maybe early 50s as far as um where I would rank him now. So he, he's definitely, uh, um, you know, played outplayed that ranking. But uh, you know, there, I think there's still a lot to be desired in his game. And, and um, but, uh, but yeah, it wasn't really, a, it wasn't really a, um, a uh, projection on how good he would be this year. It was kind of like what he's done in the past right. is what our, our list consisted of. So, you know, he, you know, like I said, somebody's got to be at the at the end of the list, and and unfortunately, it was it was Garrett Green. So when you were looking at that, as far as you know, you said it was what he had done so far. You know, at the end of last year, he took over the starting role at West Virginia uh, for JT Daniels, who whose game, for whatever reason, regressed uh, last year uh, for the Mountaineers, and he took over the starting role and. He was he was able to to go on the road or well at first he came in in relief of JT and beat Oklahoma basically for, and ran for over 100 yards. Uh, then he played pretty well against Kansas State in a in a loss and then uh, got knocked out of the game at Oklahoma State. But while he was in the game, I think he scored a touchdown or two with his legs. Uh, mm-hmm. Done most of the damage with his legs at that point. Uh, and I mean Oklahoma fans, you know. I, the Oklahoma fans and podcasters I've talked to coming into this season were like, man, I can't believe Garrett Green's, you know, ranked that low. He, you know, he killed us last year. So mm-hmm. how, how much did you take into consideration the, those games that he played at the end of last year and how well he did yeah. running the football? I, I, I looked at all of them, you know, I, I think, I, I think that, um, you know, he, he, uh, he did some really good things with his legs, obviously, but you look at his completion percentage there um, through those games and uh, on the season, 55.1% on the year with a five, uh, five touchdowns against three interceptions. Um, obviously, that's, that's not very good. Uh, that's not going to be very good on our, on, our, our, uh, on our rankings. But like you said, you know, uh, you've got a point with, with what he's done with his legs, you know, 119 yards last year against Oklahoma. That's, that's really good. Um, uh, but, you know, I, I really look at the completion percentage, um, you know, highly and, and what he's done against ranked opponents. Um, you know, Kansas state was the only, that was a ranked opponent who, uh, he started against uh, at the end of the year last year, and he, he completed uh, 55.6% of his throws um, with two interceptions in that game. Also threw three touchdowns, but, um, you know, that was most concerning to us was the completion percentage. Okay, that's fair. And, you know, it's fair, you know, this season, his his completion percentage is, again, not real high. He's in, he's in the 50s. So – is that is that still a more? I'm, I'm assuming that's still a ding against him in your eyes. Is his his ability to be consistent? Yeah, with, exactly. I mean, he's a hundred. He's a hundred twenty third in completion percentage in college football. He's uh, um, against the two ranked teams that he's played this year. I think he's been a forty seven or forty eight percent completion. Um, he's 58th in QB efficiency rankings in all of, uh, FBS. So that's, that's just, that's, uh, you know, that's definitely towards the back end there. Right. Um, you know, but obviously that, you know, he's, I think that he's made some throws and he's progressed some in his game and they've opened up the offense and gave him a little bit more, but you could tell, you know, at the beginning of the year, um, this year, 
they were really uh, weary of, of putting him in, in um, you know, high volume passing situations and not doing very much in the passing game with him. Um, but they've started to open up a little bit. You know, he started to progress a little bit more. Um, you know, I was a little bit concerned there with, uh, you know, what he did against Oklahoma. I think that that's the best team that, that, uh, West Virginia has played, hasn't, hasn't it this year, Oklahoma? Well, you, you could argue other than or Penn State at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say, uh, yeah, them or Penn State. And I think if you look at those two games, uh, he was, you know, 47, 48% passer against those two teams. And, and, um, I mean, you even take Oklahoma's defense, who's ranked 66, uh, I think, in the in the country overall, mm-hmm. in a complete 37 percent of your passes against the 66 ranked defense in the country. Um, you know, and they shut they they limited him as a runner. Um, you know, I, I kind of look at that and say, you know, uh, you know, that's not that's not very good. That's fair. Uh, and he and he did play, and he admittedly played his worst game against Oklahoma. Uh, he yeah. admitted that. Coach Brown admitted that. The Penn State yeah. game, uh, you know, it's obviously I have to go back in my memory bank here, but I think he played okay uh, from as far as running the ball. I think he, if I remember correctly, he gained about seventy some yards on the ground or something like that. I don't remember the exact number. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, right. so he, you know, he didn't have a terrible day. He and again, he didn't throw the ball really well, but um. You know, we kind of all gave him a pass for that one because it was his first game ever as the as the man, as the guy for the team, right? And everybody knew Penn State was going to be really good defensively. Um, yes. So I'll agree that the Penn State or the Penn or the Oklahoma game rather is probably his biggest letdown. But then when you look, and I know Cincinnati's, I know I know you're going to say Cincinnati's not a good team, but when you look at what he did this past week, 200 yards in the air, 150 on the ground. Uh, I mean, he played a, a fantastic he, – he done something that no West Virginia quarterback has done since Pat White uh, with those numbers. So, I mean, he's pretty pretty elite company there. Not saying he's Pat White, but he's, he's – but he's at least when you look at statistically what he's what he did, he's the only other player in that conversation. So – Yeah, I, I, absolutely. <clears throat> um, I think that he did a really good job there. And, and um, like I said, they, they've been a – Neil Brown has done a really good job marrying that that uh, run game to the passing game with him, and you know just not having a very high volume passing attack. Um, uh, you know a lot of play action, a lot of half field reads um, with him. Mm-hmm. And he, he, you know, like you said, he, he's. I, I think that, that it's it's very fair to say that he's he's outplayed um, his preseason ranking. Yeah. Like I said, am I am I uh, you know wanting to put him in the top twenty five as far as the uh, quarterbacks this year? The mm-hmm. top thirty? No, I, I'm not. I'm not quite ready. I'm not quite there with him. Um, but but definitely um, you know higher than than uh, sixty nine. That's fair. Now, what? Uh, let me ask you this: If have you? I don't know how much you've had a chance to watch our backup Nico Marchio play, but. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I watched him in high school quite a bit um, in person. Actually, I saw him a couple times. And, um, you know, there was a lot to like about him. Um, You you know, he's a highly ranked kid. I think he was committed to Florida State, wasn't he? Yes, he was. And then he he, uh, flipped to West Virginia. Yeah. Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't studied him a ton this year, but I, you know, coming out of high school, I really liked how you know on his rhythm throws, he was really on time. His footwork, you know, the the fundamentals and everything were there. Um, you know, strong kid, two hundred twenty five pounds, I think he is now. Mm-hmm. You know, plenty of arm. Um, you know, two touchdowns, three interceptions. This year, obviously not great, 38 QBR. Um, but, I, you know, I want to see more of him. Right. For sure. Obviously, there's a reason why he was so highly ranked coming out of high school. Um, 
but yeah, I, I haven't looked at him a ton. Yeah, there, there's a you know obviously he played he started one game for us this year went uh, and then played most of the pit game because of Garrett's injury, and uh, of course they catered the the offense to be a you know we we he threw the ball very little basically, uh, and they cut the field in half and really really shortened uh, you know reduced the playbook for him, which is what you do for a backup quarterback. You know, because they haven't had as many reps, but yes, sir. Uh, and and he he obviously won the two games he played in, uh, but he did not throw yeah. the ball very well, and uh, yeah, as you I mean, as you could see with his numbers there. So, and, but we still have a contingent in our fan base, very small contingent, who think he should still be the starter over Garrett Green, and I think that's absolutely asinine, personally, uh, because I mean, is his ceiling higher than Garrett's as a passer? Probably so, but. Mm-hmm. I mean, to me, when you look at the quarterback position, there's more to it. And obviously, I've not, I've not played the position at the level you have, so I'd like to get your thoughts on this. But to me, when you look at the quarterback position, there's a lot more to it than just completion percentage. You've got, you know, how does the team rally around him? What's his leadership ability? How well, you know, how much of the playbook is at their disposal? Uh, how do they run the offense? How do they manage the game? Do they protect the football, which Garrett, I mean, he's only thrown four picks this year. He, so he's doing a really good job there. He's making good decisions for the most part. In the RPO game, um, all of that stuff plays to me. You have to look at uh, the whole picture, not just you know, is he com- is he does he have a high completion percentage? What what would what would be your argument or your your thoughts on on that thought process? Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I think that the, you know the completion percentage is is extremely important um, at the quarterback position, but. It, you know, like you said, it, you know, there, there's a, there's a lot that goes into it, you know, uh, and like you said, I mean, the best thing that, that Garrett does is, is um, with his legs, you know, making explosive plays on the ground, you know, with his feet. And, um, but, you know, there's, there's, there's also the, the, the completion percentage and, and taking care of the football is, is huge. Your, your touchdown to interception ratio um, your your third and fourth down um, completion rate is is huge, and um, you know just how how good do you play against best competition? You know, can mm-hmm. you raise your play against uh, um, against good defenses and against good teams? Okay. All right, fair enough. That's pretty. You have a pretty. Uh, so you're pretty strict as far as your grading to quarterbacks, uh, which is which is fair. Uh, would you say it's a pretty strict grading system that you have? Yeah, I, I mean, I I like to say that I, I I you know I consider all angles of the quarterback position. Um, you know, I I, I mean, I I think I, that I'm I'm pretty fair with that. I, I mm-hmm. look at everything. Completion percentage is is definitely one of the highest um, on my my metric scale. Okay. Yeah, and that's and I, and that's I think that is a lot of people. Uh, the only thing with with uh, it's not been as big a problem this year as it has in years past, but we have had a lot of drop balls this year. Uh, and I don't know how that compares to other teams. I haven't studied other teams' amount of drops. That may even be something you have uh, a metric you have. Um, but and and in that Oklahoma game uh, to defend Garrett a little bit, uh, obviously he he did miss a lot of throws. I'm not you know not not denying that. But the off his offensive line also did not have their best game either, um, especially when it came to the run game. So he didn't have a whole lot of room to run in that game, yeah. uh, which, which could have opened things up for him a little bit. But uh, but nonetheless, he did have some opportunities and he missed them. So uh, yeah. I don't want I don't want to be a sunshine pumper as I like to call it and say everything's all you know lollipops and cotton candy because it's not. But uh, but that, but I knew going into the season he wasn't going to be the worst quarterback. At least, of course, I, you know, I'm obviously looking at it through golden blue lenses, so I got to admit yeah. that a little bit. But I, yeah. you know, I, I just had enough confidence. I knew in my in my heart he wasn't going to be that bad. Um, as a matter of fact, I knew he would be pretty good. Um, I actually predicted us to win seven games this year with him at quarterback. Looks like we're going to potentially win eight if we can, you know, pull, pull off the the game we should win this weekend at Baylor. Um, which probably won't help uh, beating a team like Baylor who's struggling probably won't help Garrett as far as his grading in your eyes, I would assume, because they're, they've struggled this year. Would that be a fair statement? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, you know, I, we'll, we'll just we'll 
we'll study the film and, and you know, see if he's making the, the, the correct reads from my standpoint. Obviously, I'm not in meetings, so I, I don't know which is number is number one read and progression. Mm-hmm. Right. But I, you know, I, I uh, look at it the best I can, study it the best I can, and, and we'll see. You know, I want to see if he's, he's on time and accurate and anticipatory with his throws and, and – um, you know, just just uh, making the right decisions as far as you know with his legs and and um, and with his arm. You know, I think that it'll tell us a lot. But I, yeah, I mean, I, you know, Baylor's not the best team, but you know, if he if he looks clean, if he's making all the right decisions, if he's accurate with the ball, you know, I will definitely take that in con- into consideration and and bump him up. Awesome. Well, and by the way, uh, I did read your. Uh, article you put out i think today actually uh where you actually you know spoke highly of his performance this past weekend so yeah absolutely yeah i'm 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 not a uh, i'm not a garrett green hater you know i like to, to be a realist i'm just a big fan of college football you right. know I, I i there's there's no team that i really root for that i that i hate you know i'm just a fan of of good quarterback and quarterback play you know, that's great. Well, uh, maybe we'll have you back on the show sometime, Clint, to talk about, uh, you know, some other quarterbacks or maybe, maybe talk about Garrett Moore, maybe next year or an off season or whatever. And, uh, sure. or maybe some recruiting or something like that. And, uh, yeah. do you do recruit? Do you follow recruiting closely? Is that part of what you do at 24 seven? Um, I'm, I'm assigned to the transfer portal. So gotcha. the, the transfer portal is a big focus for me not as much recruiting but i i I keep my eye on it for sure but um okay you know the the transfer portal is uh is um is crazy you know these these days and it it keeps me busy for sure awesome all right one last question for you this is kind of a general question about the big 12 in general uh when you look at the 20 looking ahead at the 2024 season with the new teams coming in arizona utah colorado uh, Arizona State and, and and the current Big Twelve teams, obviously minus Oklahoma and Texas. Who are you know? Name just a couple or a handful of quarterbacks that you think are are on pace to have a really good twenty twenty four season in the Big Twelve. You know, I, I really like the kid at, at Arizona, Noah Fafita. I think is is how you say his his last name. Mm-hmm. He's um, entered the top ten rankings for us. Uh, I think that that he's uh, that he's going to make some some real waves in the in, in the Big Twelve, like you said. Um, obviously, with a lot of rumors that Quinn Ewers is, is coming back, he's going to be uh, one of the top quarterbacks for us. You know, I'd like to see him put more of a complete season together. Um, but he's obviously you know supremely talented in, in what he can do as a passer, and, and um, obviously he's got a lot of weapons around him. You know, Josh Hoover at TCU is is a kid that I think can really rise up in a, the quarterback rankings. He's uh, extremely talented as a passer. Uh, he needs to take care of the ball a lot better, but I, I think he's one that that um, you know I'm really excited to see next year. You know, Oklahoma Jackson Arnold there. He's he was a five star for us. I think that that he's really good and what what he can do. Um, on the field at, at quarterback, um, you know, Jalen Daniels is coming back at Kansas. Mm-hmm. He's really good. I think that he could be, you know, a, a top 12, top 15 quarterback in college football, um, maybe even better. Um, you know, those are some of the guys that, that stand out to me. Um, Avery Johnson at, at Kansas State is a young kid to keep an eye on. He's a really, really good runner there at Kansas State. He's pushed Will Howard there for some playing time this year. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I, I like I like some of those guys in the Big Twelve for sure. Awesome. And then, and then we heard yesterday Cam Rising's planning to come back for for uh, for Utah as well. Yeah, yeah. He he's he's extremely tough. You know, as as a runner, mm-hmm. you know, he's not as aesthetically pleasing as right. a passer, but he gets the job done. Mm-hmm. Um, but 
I mean, if you want a, a tough guy in the run game, it's him. I mean, yeah. it's remarkable how tough he is. Yep. Okay. Well, Clint, once again, man, thank you for coming on uh, and giving us a few minutes, about 25 minutes of your time here today. Again, guys, you can go check out Clint's, Clint Brewster's work at 24-7 Sports. Uh, you can find him on X at Clint Brew 24-7. Uh, but, yeah, I'll leave a link to his latest article where he uh, – where he gave Garrett Green some love and uh, for his performance this past weekend at Cincinnati or against Cincinnati. And uh, again, Clint, uh, appreciate your time. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Well, there you have it, folks. Clint Brewster himself, the guy who rated Garrett Green 69th, says Garrett has played better than that 69th ranking, which I tried to tell you, you guys he would. But, uh, Hats off to Clint for coming on the show and being willing to face the, the tough questions and uh, for admitting, hey, uh, Garrett has outperformed where I thought he would be and for being honest and open about how he grades his, his quarterbacks. I personally did not know that he was Tim Brewster's son, so that's interesting. He's got the Colorado and Coach Prime connection there. But, uh, guys, I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. I want to hear what you had to, what your thoughts are about Clint's interview. Uh, about what he had to say. Do you think him saying Garrett's probably in the low 50s or, or, or high 40s right now in the country, do you think that's a fair placement of Garrett today as a, as a Power 5 quarterback? Let me know. Be Give me your honest opinion. I personally think he's a little better than that. If you look at his – especially if you look at how important he is to the team uh, and, and the fact that they're winning football games. So, guys, let me know. Also, please hit the like button if you enjoyed this interview with Clint. Please share it out with your family and friends. Let them know uh, where to find it at and also where to f- uh, find your West Virginia college football content. Also, I'll talk about conflict alignment a lot here on the channel if you like that kind of content. Also, guys, you see along the bottom of the screen, please go check out my website, kuzascorner.com. Uh, there's a blog over there that you can read some really good articles about West Virginia football, West Virginia basketball. Also, you can find uh, my audio-only podcast and, a few, and also get access to some of my videos over there as well at kuzascorner.com. With that being said, guys, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for tuning in and watching this episode of Kuz's Corner. Uh, Have a top shelf rest of your day in Q Country Roads.